Hi, I'm G, this is my art channel, and this is my ink tense painting of a sleeping lion statue. So there's a little peek at the equipment, brushes, and, and ink tense blocks that I use to create this painting, and of course my reference photo. So as I start the painting, you can see I've got the drawing, and it's side by side with the reference photo that I used to do the drawing from. And I start by using uh, some, well I call it yellow ochre, but the ink tense block is called baked earth. And it was a nice light warm color that I wanted to use to do the, the first washes and the kind of shadow areas on this picture before I got into any darker kind of colors. And you can see the reference photo and it's kind of very, very cool and earthy browny kind of grays. And I wanted to make it a bit warmer than that. So that's why I went with the sort of baked earth, which I might refer to as ochre over the course of the video. And I am just trying to keep the paint as light as possible as I go around this. I want it to have some color, but I'm making it very, very light kind of washes. And uh, normally what I would do is I'd mix a whole bunch of the color that I wanted in a palette. But here I was being uh, admittedly a little bit lazy. So I was just mixing a little bit of baked earth in the palette that comes with the set and just adding a bit of water each time you can see me applying that color to the actual painting. So every time I go off with a brush, I'm either putting a little bit of clean water on it in order to lighten the color that I've put on the painting, or I'm going out and I'm mixing a little bit of this baked earth with a bit of water before I can put it straight onto the picture. You see there, that's quite a, a strong amount. So I immediately get some water on the brush and water down that baked earth. So it's got a, a much lighter, um, paler kind of feel. So this kind of approach is going to give me a much more inconsistent um, kind of level of tones on the painting. So some areas are going to be a darker kind of ochre and some are going to be a lighter kind of ochre than if I just mixed all of that color to begin with before I started the painting. But I'm okay with that because as you can see, I'm drawing in a sketchbook and I'm painting in a sketchbook. So it's a finished piece in a sketchbook. It's not one that I'm going to frame and you know try and sell. So it can be a little bit rougher. It can be a little bit more loose and expressive and actually a little bit more relaxed. So here you can see that I've speeded up the process a little bit and you can see me beginning to add more and more ochre from the left hand side up over the lion's mane down to the right hand side and its paws and then I'm going to be working on the face and the reason that I did that way was I think I was putting off the face to last as I often do because it's the pressure you know of getting that um, lightness really well but also I was working sort of you know up and down left to right I didn't want to smudge and, and squish any of the paint that I'd already put on so that was um, a kind of a technical reason if you will from working from left to right and not just because I was a little bit um, intimidated by the face and getting the face and the, the tones on the face right. But in reality, I needn't have worried because like I said, it's a sketchbook piece. It was quite relaxed um, the way that I was approaching this. And as it turned out, putting on this lightest color first, you can't really go massively wrong. There you can see the colors that I used for this, deep indigo, sea blue, and baked earth. And when I started to add some more shadows to the piece now, you can see I've got that yellow ochre kind of wash all over. Now I'm mixing yellow ochre or baked earth with sea blue. So a kind of lightish cerulean cobalty kind of blue in order to get myself a, a kind of a brown kind of color. It, you know, it might tip on the edge of being slightly greeny brown, but I was okay with that because I was thinking, well, you know, it's a statue. It gets, you know, rain damaged. So I was thinking if it ends up looking a little bit green in the shadows, you know, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. There's, there's moss and stuff on these statues, so it'd be all right. And here I'm taking the same approach to when I was doing the, the baked earth, the yellow ochre, the first kind of pass. I'm putting on this shadow and where it's a bit too dark, I'm immediately taking the brush, getting a bit of um, clean water on the brush, coming back in and just sort of moving the pigment around and lightening it up and trying to blend it in and transition it a little bit more. So it's not such a stark kind of shadow, unless a stark kind of really strong contrasty shadow is needed. Then I've got to have the kind of um, the strength and the confidence to just leave it as it is. But I was, you know, going back to the clean water quite a bit, getting a bit of clean water on the brush, dabbing it on a piece of tissue paper, and then coming back in and using it to kind of blend and lighten up any of those really, really dark bits um, of shadow that I put on. So here you can see a close up of what I'm doing and I'm going in and I'm mixing this as I go along. So I'm mixing the baked earth and the sea blue together as I go along and then popping a bit in where it needs a bit of shadow, of course, referring to the photo reference and then just blending it in with the brush because these are ink tense blocks. So the idea is that you can layer them without the color you put on second mixing with the color that you put on first. 
Uh, and so I thought, you know, this would be a good test of whether that works or not. And I've got to say that as I was putting on this second color, and you can see me working it over some of the ochre areas quite a bit and adding those extra shadow areas, it didn't seem to be lifting up the um, baked earth <laughs> that I put on first. So I was, oh, that's quite a cool, it's, you know, it's layering up these colors quite nicely. That was sort of tempered, though, by the fact that what the ink tend seems to be is a slightly, it seems like a heavier, best way to describe it, heavier kind of pigment than watercolors. So you can probably see as I'm putting on some of this shadow and putting on some of these sort of blobs of paint, they kind of sit. They don't spread outwards like you would get with a uh, kind of watercolor effect where, you know, the water spreads, the paint spreads into the other paint and it sort of blooms and it mixes together. Ink tents didn't seem to work that way. It seemed kind of heavier. And as I blobbed on a bit of paint, it kind of sat where it was uh, unless I then put in the brush and manipulated it and began to move it around and make it go where I wanted it to go. Now that might be because of the way that I'm painting this and maybe I'm not using enough water and also I'm not doing this on a watercolor paper. So that could be one of the reasons why it didn't kind of work that way. But I've got a feeling that it's it's kind of quite sedimenty and quite a thick kind of pigment anyway. And that's what I mean when I say it's kind of heavy and sits in the water. I'll probably in the future have to do a picture using actual proper, proper watercolor paper rather than this sketchbook paper and then do a comparison and see if it really is like that. Now, for my third layer of shadow, I decided that I would go to a size three round brush, this Artist Watercolor Sable one from Winsor Newton. And here I'm using this to do much more delicate kind of brushwork in among some of those shadows because I don't want the shadow work I put on here to completely obliterate, first of all, the baked earth layer and then the second layer that I put on. So this is the third and final layer that I'm thinking of using. And here I've used um, baked earth again mixed with deep indigo to try and get a, another slightly darker brown um, so it's going to look a little bit more like it does in the reference photo, but it's going to be no way as dark uh, and those shadows as almost black and really, really deep brown as you can see in the reference photo. There's going to be shadow, but maybe not quite that thick. And you may be looking at the reference photo and wondering, well, he usually does flowers and maybe a bit of fan art. So what's this statue that he's doing? Um, I've just recently discovered after moving house that I've got absolutely tons of old photographs, photographs that I took back in the day before digital cameras. And I've got really, really loads of them. And I just kind of wanted to get rid of some of them. So I, I sort of sifted through and I picked out all of these pictures that I've taken over the years of sculptures and 3D pieces. And I thought what I would do is use those photos to actually, you know, do some drawings, some studies and some paintings of all of these photographs so I can, you know, ship them out, get rid of them. And also I'll have all of the drawing and painting practice from doing a sketch from each of them. So that's the plan. Uh, so it's my sketch my photos project, if you will. And what I'm trying to do is fill up my sketchbook with all of these images. And I'm trying to use a different media each time I do one of these. So from inks to pencils to colored pencils to ink tents that you can see here and so on. And what I found so far is it's a really good motivator. Every time I'm sat there thinking, oh, what should I draw? What should I paint at the moment? I'm like, oh, I'll look through my selection of sculpture photos and I'll do one of those and I'll challenge myself by doing it in a different media. So it's a really good idea, at least for me, definitely a really good motivator to keep me producing work without getting bored and without sort of like going, oh, what can I do? Kind of thing. So here we go, another close up, and you can see me adding this sort of third and final layer of paint and my second layer of shadows. And all I'm trying to do is deepen some of these shadow areas, I'm still using the clean water on that brush. You know, if I put on the shadow and I think it's a bit too dark, a bit too thick, get some clean water on there and sort of move that paint around, dilute it a little bit. And you can also see that I've left paper white highlights as well as I've gone along. So I kind of knew looking at the reference photo which side the light was mainly hitting. And I've just left those areas a nice pale white. Uh, and hopefully against the shadows that I'm putting on, those sort of white areas uh, will have a nice contrast and will show up the shadow areas and give it a bit of 3D. You might be thinking that, you know, the shadow areas and also the kind of color scheme of the piece are not super accurate when I compare them to the, the photo reference, when you see the photo reference. Uh, but I'm OK with that. I pretty much made my piece with that straight away. I was just thinking, well, you know, again, I'm, I, I do use photos quite a bit and I don't want to slavishly copy that photo. So I do want to introduce something that looks a bit different. So, you know, 
I was happy with warming up the colors, no problem with that. I do kind of wish I'd been able to mix perhaps a slightly darker shadow areas uh, that they're you know, as strong as they are on the reference photo. But I'm happy with the shadows that I've got. I do think that the, the shadows are dark enough that it does give it a kind of contrast and it does give it the depth that it needs to give it that kind of 3D feel. But on the whole, I really enjoyed using ink tents for this painting. It was quite a good learning experience for me to figure out how they work best and how they're different to watercolor paints. Uh, and also it was you know, a good bit of practice working within my sketchbook as well. I enjoyed that. It felt much more loose and much more relaxed being able to work in the sketchbook. So there you go, photo and painting side by side. Um, I really enjoyed doing this, but let me know in the comments below what you thought of the painting and what you thought of my thoughts on ink tents. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And you might want to check out my first Go With Ink Tents blocks, which is much more of a review, and you can find the links to that below this. Thanks for watching.